All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm delighted to welcome you to the first of our series of webinars on high-growth markets for first-time exporters, beginning with Germany. The series is being run in partnership with our principal sponsor, HSBC, and UKTI's Overseas Business Network. My name is William Barnes-Graham, and I'm the Digital Content Manager at Open to Export. We are a government-supported online community helping small UK businesses get ready to sell overseas. We do this through our content, our r Experts Forum, our brand new Export Action Plan, and our useful contacts and full range of support on our site. Please visit the site to check these out, and here you'll also find some excellent articles um, regarding Germany as well in the country pages, which you can find in the Selecting a Market page. You can ask questions throughout the webinar using the question box on the right hand side. We will try to get to as many of these as we can, um, and if not, then you can ask them through our RC Experts forum. One final point, we will be recording the webinar, sending you a copy, with, copy of it within a week, as well as uploading it to our site where you can view this and all of our previous webinars on demand as often as you like. We have a fantastic panel for you today. Setting the scene will be Michael Jones, head of the Germany country desk at HSBC. He'll be giving an overview of the opportunities and challenges of trading in Germany. Following Michael will be Stefan Peikert, a sustaining member and committee member of, of for Berlin with the British Chamber of Commerce in Ger Germany, who works on the ground with small UK businesses with UKTI, trying to improve UK exports to, to Germany. He'll be sharing some of his experiences and giving tips about how to get into the market. So without further ado, I'd like to hand over to Michael to begin today's webinar. Michael. Thanks very much indeed, William, and uh, thanks to everybody for joining the webinar today. Uh, my name is Michael Jones, and as William said, I head the uh, HSBC Commercial Banking German Desk uh, here in London in the UK. Uh, I'm just going to take you through a handful of slides uh, to uh, explain a little bit about some of the uh, opportunities uh, that Germany presents as a high growth market uh, for UK exports. Uh, if we can get to the first slide, please. Thank you. So, um, Germany, I think many of you will be uh, familiar with uh, where it is. It's clearly a, a very large country and a, a clear driver within the European Union. Um, I just want to pick up on a, a, a couple of the points that are mentioned on there. Um, I guess the language uh, clearly is German. Uh, I don't think I'm sharing any trade secrets, but uh, German does vary. So from the uh, north uh, in Schleswig-Holstein down to the south in Bavaria, um, a number of different dialects are spoken. Um, and whilst German is uh, uh, clearly very useful uh, in business, uh, what you'll find particularly is a lot of the uh, younger generation and particularly those people uh, who are involved in business, uh, particularly international business, are uh, fully fluent in English uh, as an international, uh, major international language. Uh, clearly, Germany uh, possesses uh, one major advantage that lots of other higher growth markets don't possess in so much that it's geographically close to the UK. So depending on where you're going to, it's anywhere between about 45 minutes uh, and an hour and a half by plane. So logistically, um, uh, a relatively easy place to do business with and to export your goods uh, and your products to. Uh, the country is formed of 16 states or Bundesländer uh, and, you know, really has uh, fantastic connectivity uh, around Europe uh, and indeed to the rest of the world as we'll see as we progress through the slides today. So going on to the, uh, the next slide. Germany is a, a social market economy, and as many people will be aware, uh, a lot of its success in recent years and decades has been built on uh, their Mittelstand or the small and medium-sized businesses that really drive the German economy. Um, it is the largest national economy within Europe uh, and one of the largest uh, economies in the world. Uh, GDP of uh, somewhere around 2.7 trillion euros, which is really quite a, a large figure when you think about it. Uh, we'll come on to some of the sectors in a moment, but similar to most 
developed economies, uh, services play a, a major part. Uh, and Germany, of course, is famous for its industry and its manufacturing. Uh, and I think that what we're seeing uh, uh, in the current trends is that some of that traditional manufacturing uh, is being replaced with some of the more uh, modern uh, and future-looking technologies. Uh, and again, we'll come on to that in just a couple of moments. Uh, a key point is that uh, their manufacturing output has, of course, uh, uh, been so high that it's uh, outstripped the domestic demands within Germany for many years. And as a result, Germany is a huge exporter uh, to the rest of the world already. Um, however, uh, that doesn't mean there isn't an opportunity. Um, Germany is also uh, one of the UK's uh, largest export markets in Europe um, and one of the very largest, so second largest globally after the US. 11% um, of all UK exports to the EU went to Germany uh, in 2014, uh, according to IMF statistics. So uh, really the opportunity is there. Um, it's more about you know, how British companies can tap into that opportunity uh, and which sectors are going to be most attractive. So just coming on to the next slide then, so there are a number of uh, advantages uh, and clearly uh, a number of challenges as well, I think it's fair to say, uh, when you're looking to export to Germany. Um, clearly it's a developed market, it's got a high quality infrastructure, um, it's got the same uh, energy and communication uh, uh, connectivity that you would expect in a developed European market and is, is not too dissimilar in many respects to the UK. Um, it's got a very high quality transport network, uh, not only in terms of its network of airports, uh, but uh, train connections, uh, road network, um, and as I alluded to uh, earlier on, it's uh, really a strategic logistics hub, uh, both for European trade and as you then start to look east towards uh, the markets of Eastern Europe and indeed then, you know, going further east from there. Um, it's got a welcome uh, 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 investment regime, so uh, you know it's really a relatively easy place in many respects to do business. Certainly, when you compare it to a number of other um, uh, more emerging markets or higher growth economies that you know maybe are still coming up the curve of you know opening up to the wider world, whereas Germany is very much there already. And one of the biggest benefits that it's got is uh, a highly trained, highly educated, and cultured uh, population. Um, many of whom, as I mentioned, already speak fantastic English and, uh, you know, already uh, benefit from that fantastic productivity rate that I think Germany is uh, somewhat synonymous with. Uh, that said, um, with those kind of benefits, there are going to be some challenges as well. And clearly the German market is very uh, competitive. Uh, and as a result, if you're looking to grow your exports into Germany or looking to do more business in Germany as a UK firm, uh, patience and persistence is definitely key. Um, and really getting to understand the market, getting to build relationships. Um, and all of that will help to give you an advantage um, when it comes to facing uh, if you like the buy local attitude that I guess is seen in uh, most economies to a, a greater or lesser degree, uh, but is definitely still present within the German culture uh, and the German community. Um, in my mind, uh, the things that uh, British companies need to be mindful of when they're looking to export and, and do more work in Germany is you know, thinking about your product or your service that you're offering, you know, is it high quality? Uh, does it offer good value? And how have you built the relationship with the people that you're going to be doing business with, whether it's your customers, uh, whether it's your uh, partners in Germany, to make sure that you've really got a, a sustainable competitive advantage? So moving on to the next slide, um, there are a number of uh, industries and sectors uh, that perhaps play particularly well for UK businesses and where certainly we've seen UK businesses exporting to Germany have a, an advantage and demonstrate an opportunity there in the past. And these are sectors where we also believe that there's going to be uh, increasing opportunity moving forward. So uh, there's 
uh, a number displayed there on your screen, uh, clearly as a manufacturing economy, uh, industry sectors such as aerospace um, and automotive and agriculture um, have got a high capital intensity. So where British firms can help to provide the specialist uh, manufactured parts uh, and components that go into those uh, broader goods and um, the products that are produced in Germany and then potentially shipped all around the world. Uh, that's really an area where British firms have been successful and can continue to grow uh, in success moving forwards. Uh, looking down the slide a little bit, uh, biopharma is clearly a relatively new uh, industry but one where there's huge potential for growth uh, together with healthcare and of course healthcare is a growing market around the world, um, particularly in developed economies such as the UK and Germany, uh, you know these are economies that do have an aging population and therefore I think healthcare is going to become increasingly important and you know if you can find a niche or you already have a niche in your product and service surface offering that plays nicely into this space. Maybe Germany is a, a relatively easy to access export market for you where the demographics um, are already showing the right trends to provide long and sustainable growth over the coming years. Um, on top of the ones that I mentioned there, I'd um, add maybe a couple more, so environmental uh, industries and those things surrounding it, so renewable energy uh, has perhaps been having a, a slightly tougher time of late uh, along with the broader energy sector. Um, but nonetheless, uh, Germany is a market whereby uh, renewable energy is something that really uh, fits into the culture of, of the German mindset and is something that's been supported tremendously over recent years by the German government in terms of the subsidies that they've provided. Um, perhaps there's an opportunity there um, if that's something that you're involved in uh, to really be considering uh, not only here in the UK with the, the growth in the sector we're seeing here uh, but also in terms of how you can partner with German companies and export your goods and your services to Germany. Um, the final one that I had mentioned briefly is uh, sort of tech uh, and communications whereby um, certainly around Berlin and uh, some of the other more modern vibrant cities um, you know there's really a very entrepreneurial spirit uh, and those large numbers of young well-trained innovative people really uh, lend themselves to this kind of uh, uh, development and this kind of an industry um, and again if that's something that you're involved in uh, maybe there's an opportunity for you to uh, consider working more in a, a German context moving forwards. So coming on to my last slide uh, for today, um, the bit I'd really like to focus on here and it, it sort of works quite nicely as a, a wrap up for my portion of the section uh, is the uh, table just on the right hand side there at the top and what I guess you'll see there is um, you know a comparison between uh, where are the biggest uh, you know, who are the biggest importers to Germany or who have they been in, in recent years and how do we foresee that growing and evolving um, you know by the time you get to 2030 and I think what's really reassuring for me um, in a world whereby people talk often about the uh, export opportunity that is doubtless there in emerging markets, uh, uh, China, India, uh, Brazil, uh, uh, perhaps in recent years if not so much uh, recently. Um, what's really reassuring for me is that the UK is, is firmly in the top five for Germany now and is still forecast to be in that top five uh, you know when we fast forward 15 years. So in terms of the sustainable business opportunity that uh, you can gain by developing now your bonds with Germany by looking at what you might be able to do to grow your presence of your product and your service in Germany, I think this really presents that sustainable business case for saying you know this is an opportunity to invest now, have the patience, get into the market and you're doing it for the longer run. So uh, hopefully that's provided you uh, with an opportunity to understand a, a little bit about the opportunities that are there. Um, we'll be taking some questions later on but with that I'd like to hand back to William. 
Cool. Thank you, Michael. That was um really great overview. Um, as as Michael said, um, we'll be doing questions at the end, so please um ask them through our control panel on the right hand side, and we'll try and get to as many of those as possible. So um, without further ado, uh, Stefan to talk in greater detail about doing business in Germany. Yeah. Thank you, Will, and hello from Berlin. Um, my name is uh, Stefan Peikert, and uh, I'm uh, one of the, as Will said, uh, proactive players within the context of the British Chamber of Commerce here in Germany. And I've, present, I've prepared this presentation together with a legal colleague, York, York Alexander von Massenbach. He's with uh, Luther Law in, in, in London. And he was wise enough to say, hey, we are not going to do the boring law stuff in order to keep you maybe from even going to Germany. Um, but still, York is on board and he's also available and uh, I've added one or two slides uh, of York as well, so Will, if you could continue. Right, um, this is really just a few highlights uh, I want you to, to remember. Um, ten minutes are way not enough uh, to, uh, to, to understand Germany as a whole. But one thing really is uh, what is very important, that Germany is absolutely a decentralized market due to the history, especially of the industrialization and, and after the Second World War, um, there is no center. And um, every sector has a different landscape. Of course, there are stronger regions than others. Um, but uh, in the end, um, if you can click once, Will, uh, the golden rule here is really know the landscape of your sector. Because no, if you could go back one slide, thanks. Um, the golden rule is there below, know the landscape of your sector. And also you should remember, if you want to enter Germany as an industrial supplier, so supplying German industry, you very often will compete with uh, sourcing in East Germany or sourcing in Central Europe or sourcing in Western Europe. So the, Germany is all about value chains and uh, where to tap in. Um, um, networks, company networks are usually not at, uh, at um, usually not at federal level, but uh, industry networks are at state level or even regional level. So if you have German association of sector XYZ, it's usually an association of the associations of the states. So if you want to enter networks, again, you have to do that on regional level. So um, on the sales side, you have to understand um, the regional structure of your sector. Uh, one good example, next slide please, is, and I don't want to dig too deep into this, this is the R&D landscape and basically what you see is there is no center. Um, and um, as R&D is spread over Germany, it's, um, it's, it's just the same with, with all the main economic activities. And there's also a lot more in the East than you will think. Next slide please. Um, usually what I do is, uh, when I do presentations in the UK, I do a little quiz. I have like many 15 questions, I just took a few and, uh, and put them here in and um, just so you can check while listening to me, do you really know Germany a little bit? So the largest state by population is Nordrhein-Westfalen. Um, uh, it's 16 million, so more or less the size of the uh, Netherlands and it's of course North Rhine-Westphalia, Nordrhein-Westfalen, it's in the West Düsseldorf, Cologne. Um, are the cities you might know, or for those which are in soccer, Dortmund might also ring a bell, the city where Jürgen Klopp was before. Okay, next slide please. Okay, that's an interesting thing, because uh, in the past, uh, rightly enough, talking about Germany, we talk about Mittelstand, we talk about thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of businesses also globally active. But there's also the good old Germany PLC, as we call it. So some uh, big industry players are really close to government, and one is exactly uh, a 20% state-owned company. It is um, basically a state-owned business, and this is Volkswagen. So that's why the federal state of Niedersachsen is a bit nervous at the moment with uh, the challenges or issues um, or even problems around the manipulated um, software around the diesel engines because for Niedersachsen it really means billions of euros profit share every year in the state's budget. Volkswagen is also Germany's largest corporate. Um, next slide please. Yeah, that's an interesting one because uh, the DAX 30, the stock market index, the big players and you would think that 
Berlin plays a role here, being the capital and the center of the new Germany, but exactly, um, click please, it's zero. So no DAX 30 company is headquartered um, in Berlin. So Berlin really is not the economic center of Germany. There is basically no economic center. That's what you should remember. Next slide. Most expensive cities to live in. Um, it's a shame I can't hear you, so you can't be guessing, but it's um, if you just click. Um, it's Munich, actually, followed by Frankfurt. And then it's interesting, Freiburg, Heidelberg, Stuttgart, all in the southwest, Baden-Württemberg, Hamburg. Berlin is not even on this list, not even top 10. Um, so the capital is a cheap place, which also leads to um, to the growth of the creative and digital industry in, in Berlin, by the way. Next slide. Yeah, and that's interesting. If you add exports and imports, and usually you only look at goods, but if you look include services, actually the UK, at least in 2013-14, was Germany's largest trading partner in goods and services. And this shows that uh, services uh, play um, really an important role also and could play an even more important one in, in the business relations between the UK and Germany. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. Okay, where to fit in? Um, as it was rightly said, Germany is super competitive and many of you um, smaller, medium-sized exporters or potential exporters, future exporters from the UK say, oh my God. I mean, there's such a lot of competition. Everything is already there. How can I fit in? Where to fit in? Be patient. Yes, have a USP. Yes, this is interesting, uh, important, but um, how do I manage this? And if you look at German industry, um, um, of course, you have to understand, and already that was said, that Germany is completely built on exports. Machine engineering, automotive industry, chemical industry are the main export sectors. And we really have our wealth here built on exports, not so much on, on domestic consumption, which also has grown a little bit in, in, in the role for the economy, but still the export industry is the main driver of the German economy, which means Germany faces growing competition in emerging markets. And again, many of the emerging markets, if you look back the two years, um, um, are now a little bit in a, in a tricky stage. China is not growing so much anymore. Um, Russia is, of course, we face political challenges. Um, India not really took off. Um, Brazil in, in problems. So for Germany, really maintaining the wealth stream from exports really means that um, we have to even improve our competitivity. And uh, at the same time, we have a growing shortage of skilled workforce, especially in West Germany. Um, and just buying cheap and selling expensive is no longer the recipe. It's not working anymore. Um, cheap supplies um, from faraway markets, from cheap places, are not good enough for the German quality approach. So efficient supply. That's uh, that's key. So what you see is a lot of reintegration of previously outsourced activities and a lot more high quality sourcing, not so much of components, but really of systems um, in Europe. And, um, and I think this is an opportunity for the UK, um, definitely. Um, if you click once, so still it's worth looking, looking at the competition. Um, because the competition in Germany will be totally different from the one in the, uh, you see in the UK. So if you want to supply German industry, basically think about how can I help my German industrial client to export better, to be globally more competitive. And if you have good answers there, you're already on the right track to find your USP. Next slide. Okay. What are the Germans like? I mean, we seem to be tough to sell to. Sell to. Um, some people say so. So yes, we are quality oriented. Uh, quality, um, actually, if we say quality in German, Qualität, different to the English way of using the word quality. If you say quality, you ask yourself, okay, what quality? Top quality, low quality, medium quality. If we say Qualität, it's always good quality. 
quality is not a neutral word. This says how mad we are about quality. We love it. And price is really the next thing. Of course, we care about the price, but if the quality is not there, um, forget it. So you have to really define the quality which is needed for the German market and then deliver that for, for a good price. We have um, kind of a process-driven attitude um, when we enter personal relationships with, especially with suppliers, and you want to be a supplier. So you would keep the distance. Um, very difficult if you start, if you can talk a little bit of German, can speak a little bit of German because you, ha you don't go straight to the do, Z, so a little bit have high cut, yeah, and um, and allow the customer to get closer, yeah, give him the initiative on telling more private things and letting you get closer. Don't do this yourself. Um, very important if you want to um, pitch yourself as supplier to a German client. Um, first, you have to prove that you are good. So that's why German websites or company brochures sometimes are pretty boring from a British perspective because you see all the certificates, the machine lists, the photographs from the from the from the production uh, room, the, the equipment which is used. First we have to you have to qualify that you can solve the customer's problem or task and then he might allow you um, to solve it. So very technical introduction in industry is definitely what matters. Hierarchy matters as well. Um, yeah, and if you are already active in one of the markets I've listed and you are successful there, they are more or less some of in, in some ways um, in this regard similar to Germany. If you can click once, so um, yeah, hard facts, um, not too much small talk actually, a little bit, but not too much really, and um, really go to the point and company presentations really looking at at what the UK has to offer there. If it's a bit boring, it might just be right. So the next slide, please. Next slide. Okay. Um, just briefly, there was, was one slide from, from, from York as well. If you want to go distribution, of course, it's easily said, hey, we just need a German partner and then we don't have to care about uh, about the cultural distance and the language because the German partner will take care of all this. If you look at um, the task that you face to transfer you, your USP to a German client, um, you will have to be close to them. So instead of looking for distribution partners, local partners, um, think about selecting a small group of high potential clients and go more direct. This is usually the better option um, because commercial agents can become a, a gatekeeper between you and the customer in the process. So if you can work directly, rather instead of uh, talking to many distributors, focus at 10, 20 really high potential clients and develop your business with them. Next slide, please. Yeah, one, go on. Okay, if you have to divide Germany, that's that's important. Um, and if you um, want to go through distributors, um, you have to understand that the distribution landscape in Germany, very much like the UK, has evolved with the industrial history and the industrialization. Industrialization. So usually you will not have national distributors. You will have regional ones in different areas. And I've listed here one system, how to divide Germany into sales regions, West, Nordrhein-Westfalen, so big, Central, South, sometimes even Southwest, Stuttgart and Munich are competing, Northwest, Northeast. Um, you will not find one German partner, unfortunately. So you have to involve yourself in, uh, in uh, marketing on the ground in Germany as well. Next slide. Just go on. Okay, language, it was mentioned. Um, when you sell to Germans, in the end, you need a German interface, usually. Yes, we speak English. Yes, we sell to the whole world in English, but when we buy, it's a different thing. So, unless you are in an, in an area where English is the totally accepted business language, um, in the end, you will need, especially when the business is growing, a German-speaking um, person. Next slide. Yes, sprechen Sie Deutsch. Okay, 
um, York um, prepared it with me. He's in, in London. If you have legal questions, next slide. And before finishing it, Simon is, is our contact in the UK. He's available like I am. I just want to mention uh, a few things uh, which are not on the slides as final remark. If you want to have a good feeling of Germany, use trade fairs in Germany. Germany is the trade fair the main trade for market of the continent, but don't use it the way that you exhibit right away. Use it as visitor, um, um, but regarding the language, never forget if you go to the big shows, big fairs in Hannover, Düsseldorf, Munich, Frankfurt, um, yes, everything will be English, but they are also export events. So, um, and they are not usually events where you can sell to the Germans very well, it's really is a market research place. place. You can see there what the Germans are offering and where you might fit in, where you can supply to. The actual sales will never happen on a, on a trade fair in, in Germany. So use the trade fairs and um, I would also recommend all of you which are involved in the digitalization. UK is the most digitalized economy society in Europe and Germany is way behind but still catching up. That really creates a lot of opportunities for UK companies as well. And um, yeah, and we'd love to see you in Germany. Thank you very much. Cool, thank you, Stefan, and thank you, Michael, again. Um, really interesting to hear both of um, those presentations. And um, just on Dietrich's point, we've actually done a guide on um, Anuga, which is a food and, food and drink show. But um, again, it's a, it's a big one, so I definitely advise um, having a look at that. Um, just to go into the questions, um, to begin with, um, let's just pick up on a point you just made, Stefan. Uh, this is from John Hardman. Um, he asks, when translating software to use German, will one version of written German be understood across the country? Or do, is there kind of a regional variations in, in, um, in how German language is understood? No, software is one German. And the same German will help you also in Austria and in German-speaking Switzerland. Okay, thank you. Um, and you've had quite a few questions, um, as we often do, on just distribution, um, which you touched on again. Um, there's one question from Dennis, which is um, how to grow distribution in, in Germany with considering there's, he's saying, prohibitively high listing fees, complex margin structures within the buying groups. And you also had a, um, a question here, which is kind of how, how many distributors do you need considering how big Germany is? Okay, um, talking about listing fees, I think we are then in retail. Um, retail is just as tough as it is in the UK, actually. That's maybe the, the short answer. Um, you should go as direct as possible. Um, but on the other hand, um, if you only have a few products, it, it might make sense in retail to have somebody who is managing um, 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 products of one type um, and and bringing them on the shelf in, into retail. I think if, if you're going into retail, you might be fine with one agent or distributor. If you really need a distributor, and that's what I'm doubting usually, um, um, or what I would check like three times, um, two, three are the minimum, I think, looking at the regions. Okay, thank you, Stefan. Um, question has just come in from Gemma, um, which is kind of what key advice would you give for a unique kind of rehab product? So she's um, looking at wheelchair users. She asked kind of um, in particular advice regarding certification and how to get accepted for reimbursement via insurance systems. Um, would, you, would you be able to speak to that? I can. Um, I mean the the listing and the um, the funding by the uh, by the insurance the, the the public health insurance as well as the private health insurance is is technical thing. Um, information is available through UKTI through us, um, but um, um, in the end you will need um, either a person or an agent um, to sell into the so-called uh, Sanitätshäuser, those are the shops where uh, home care users buy their products. And um, just by coincidence, one of our clients is doing um, 
cushions for wheelchairs <laughs> and is market leader in Germany, um, a German company. We helped them to export. We just helped them into the South African market. And they're interested in the UK. Unless you don't do cushions, get in touch through us, through Will. We might be able to do a barter, con connect you to our client. <laughs> so he might help you in Germany and you might be able to help them into the UK. Um, but really you need an agent, one person, um, to look at this uh, home care market, I think. Okay, thank you, Stefan. Um, question which might be good for, for you, Michael. Um, just, just regarding kind of companies coming um, to the UK from Germany, kind of um, there's something kind of in terms of supply, which supply chains, which Stefan mentioned earlier. I was wondering what kind of, um, what's the, the landscape there and what advice would you, you give for companies either looking to, um, to use a German importer or, um, yeah, what advice would you give regarding that? Yeah, thanks, William. I mean, I, we see uh, huge numbers of German companies uh, investing in the UK. Um, it's clearly an important market for Germany uh, uh, as much as Germany is an important market for UK companies. And I think what I would say is those, those companies that are coming to the UK are doing so at all different shapes and sizes. So the largest companies come, the smallest ones come. Some of them set up facilities here. Some of them will just set up a sales office. But I think there's really an opportunity opportunity as well for established UK companies who really understand the UK landscape which is arguably every bit as challenging uh, to navigate as uh, the German landscape that we've been through today um, and to really be able to provide that expert knowledge on the UK to you know be selling into that supply chain so you know UK companies with products and with services that they can offer have you thought have you considered how you can be supporting those German companies companies uh, as they come into the UK because you know Germany uh, is a strong country the uh, companies that will want to grow internationally are strong and they've got the ability to do so um, and I think that you know that's really an opportunity that should not be missed either and you know we see growing number of companies uh, looking to the UK as a, a primary of investment so uh, really strong opportunities there as well. Cool. Thank you, Michael. Um, and I think probably just one last question. Um, we've had a few questions uh, on your point regarding uh, trade shows and trade delegations. Um, Stefan, uh, there's one from Alison, which is kind of where do you recommend visiting? Um, and also one, f um, another question, which is just if not using big fairs to to um, sell, are you suggesting that other smaller, smaller fairs might be better for kind of selling with the bigger fairs more useful for research? Trade fairs are a networking instrument and not a sales point from my point of view. Um, so you would go and visit a trade fair to understand what kind of products are put out as innovation, where are the trends and if you are in industry, um, in manufacturing, of course Hannover, the largest show in the world is interesting if you are medical, medical, but really there is a uh, um, so many leading uh, trade shows in, in Germany, world leading, that it's hard to recommend Anuga, of course, for food. If you want food tech, then it's Anuga Food Tech. <laughs> it's a different show. Also for rehab, it's a special edition of Medica, and I could go on for hours. Um, actually, um, there is a great German database, auma.de, AUMA, which is the German Trade Fair Association, auma.de. Um, and th there you can research also in English shows, regional level and national level. Regional shows are more of a marketplace, I agree, but in the end, if you want to sell, identify your, your, your client and then approach him in a, in a way where you don't look like a visitor, but like a, um, having a direct presence or really are available. So, so um, I wouldn't recommend doing the first contact through trade shows um, um, for sales. Um, in general because yeah, um, there are more intelligent ways also to spend the money. Um, but the moment you have a distributor in Germany, you should be present and visible on trade shows. Um, that is for sure. Cool. Thank you, Stefan. And I think um, with that, we'll probably start to wrap up, I think. Um, so um, if you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to ask them on our forum um, and uh, we'll try to get to as many of the questions asked today um, afterwards as well as possible. Um, so thank you for the questions, some really good ones there, and we'll try to get back to those in a few days. So um, 
just uh, thank you both, uh, Michael and Stefan. I think really useful. Um, and also thank you to VHSBC and the Overseas Business Network for supporting this series. Um, just a reminder that the second part of the series will be taking place after this one. Um, we'll be discussing the US market at 3.30. Um, again, um, similar format to this, and hopefully it will be equally as useful. Um, and then tomorrow we have two webinars, one on China at 2 p.m. and one on India at 3.30 p.m. Um, and following this high growth market series, we will be our next webinar is on how to reach international customers online. That will be at the end of November. Um, so uh, have, a, have a look, for, keep your eyes peeled for that. And um, we'll also um, be doing more webinars for the new year as well. And just a quick reminder that we will send you a recording in the next few days of this webinar um, if you want to recap any, make any new notes. And um, yeah, just go to the special features tab on Open Export and select recent or upcoming webinars to get all the information you need there. One final thing from us, um, we this week launched our new export action plan. Uh, this is a free and easy to use online planning tool, uh, which is designed to help new exporters get ready to sell overseas. Uh, please take a look at the website for more details and to complete your own export action plan. And also to become eligible to win £3,000 of funding in our export action plan competition this winter. Um, really exciting uh, project that is. And, um, that's all from us now. Please take our survey as you exit to let us know what you thought of the webinar and to give any suggestions for improvements or future topics. So thank you for attending and uh, goodbye.